Hey, Joe, with you checking out in the hurricane this week, I thought I'd put together some cockpit clips so you get a better picture of what's happening in the airplane. Primer. That felt like air. <clears throat> ah, there's, okay. So we got about half of a shot of prime in there. Fuel pressure, there it is. Starting magneto is on. Where? That start was a little lean. One full stroke of prime would have been better. And the three after start things in the bottom right hand corner of the cockpit are oil pressure, starting mag, and primer. For the run-up, 1900 RPM is no problem. For the cross-check, 890 on the true tack gives you about 1900 RPM. The tail doesn't want to lift if the stick's back, and the airplane won't creep forward if the gauge shows you have good air pressure to each brake. This time at the threshold is really important. Lower the seat right down, swivel the gear guard out of the way, crank the throttle friction right up for when you swap hands after liftoff. Radio frequency set and transponder to altitude. DG set and uncaged. And it seems to work, by the way. Radio call with intentions. Brakes off. Throttle friction check one more time. Power up smoothly to plus six, 42 inches. And that's been plenty of snap. There's less yaw than the P40 and less need for right aileron. And lifting the tail steadily does not give you a big gyroscopic jolt. Brakes to stop the wheel spin. Gear up, which takes a firm motion to open the valve. Bit of trim. And the two red lights come on very quickly, so lever back to neutral immediately. Shallow turn to stay close to the airport initially. Power back to climb, 36 inches and 2650 RPM. And you might want to tie your shoulder strap ends in a little more than I did. It's definitely a hurricane. Unlock the hood. Reach way back. And as you slide it forward, your shoulder tends to bump the volume knob and turn the squelch on. Easy fix. I used the airspace northeast of Terso, which kept me clear of the terminal radar area. Wingovers are a good coordination exercise in this hurricane because they're quite different from right to left. I recommend doing lots of them to get a feel for that. To the right, there's quite a bit of rudder movement required to keep the ball in the center, and to the left, almost none. And you can do this with just normal cruise power set. The engine's quite smooth at 32 inches and 2150 RPM. I just leave that on and yo-yo around.
Controls are fun, and in this airplane, a total no-brainer. For a four-point, use at least 230 for an entry, and a bit more power, of course, maybe 34 inches and 2300 RPM. It's very hot in there, as you know. On this flight, I pulled back the hood a couple of inches, and we had a new carbon monoxide detector in there, and it did not turn black, so I think we're good with that. Fuel checks, it's been feeding a little faster out of the right down the left, keep an eye on that. I thought I was keeping the ball in the middle. <laughs> For landing, well, the training traffic will probably prevent you from doing an overhead brake, but you just have to fit in. It's not too bad with this airplane since it will fly slow. A couple of hard 360s outside the pattern will get you back to gear speed without having to pull the power to idle. Using 55 flap instead of 80 allows great control for a three-pointer. It's not squirrely on the ground, and the brakes come in more or less even, although I don't use them much. Making the taxiway at the 3,000 foot mark is easy in this aircraft. Taxiing in, it heats up at about the same rate as the P-40. Not a problem. Nothing like the Spitfire. Anyway, have fun with it, Joe. The guy's built a good one. <laughs> 